Hey, Brad Kazmarski back, talking shoulder mobility. Before we get into the correctives, I want to say that shoulder mobility is one of the trickier ones, at least for me. There's a lot of moving parts. So I want to break it down, at least for myself, maybe more so than in the FMS strictly itself, um, to thoracic spine, mobility, and then sh um, actual internal external rotation, which they don't, they don't do, but I want to put it in there, and I'll show you why in a second. So, um, in actual internal external rotation, and then motor control. So either you have the mobility of the thoracic spine, or you don't, and that's where a lot of the correctives live. A lot of the times people will say you need more T-spine rotation. Completely agree with that, 100%. All their correctives ground-based are now just getting their T-spine. Once they've gotten their T-spine mobility, they see a little bit of extra increase, and they just move on. That may be the case for some people, and it may not be the case. I think we need to take it one step further and see, is it T-spine? If it is, we need to get there. If it's intra extra rotation, we need to get there. And then we need to do motor control, which is putting it back together and working in harmony up the steps from ground base to standing. So, we've done in the last video, we went through what I would do ground based thoracic rotation. So, I've taken my shoulder completely out of it. If you go here with shoulder, I want to take it out. In this position, am I getting thoracic rotation? Now, from that position, also, once we take a T-spine out of it, can we keep our shoulder flat, intro extra rotation, this is more clinical, I know, breaking the rules, but shoulder flat, we're supposed to be able to get roughly to here and to here with our shoulder still. A little bit of movement, not great, probably right about there. Internal, I'm right there, okay? No amount of extra rib rolling probably is going to help that once the rib rolling is fixed. Once I get the rib rolling and the T-spine mobility, this is going to always limit my internal rotation on that. Same thing on this side. Once I'm here, external rotation, I'm left-handed through a little baseball, so I can almost get my full external rotation. Look at me at internal rotation. Right there. Holy crap. Not good. See right there, that's all I'm getting. <laughs> but you put me in this position right here, so, you know, I'm getting to here, or I'm getting here. <clears throat> it is important to be able to separate those, okay? So if I have to strip down to that level, saying I'm not passing the shoulder mobility screen, and I have now the T-spine rotation, I've done the rib rolls, or I didn't need to, either way, I've gotten the T-spine rotation, Next up, am I getting the internal and external rotation? If yes, we're getting it, then we move to motor control. We have both the rotation of the T-spine and the proper internal and external rotation, but we're still not getting the pattern, boom, motor control, we can fix that. If we're not getting either the T-spine or the internal and external rotation, that's where we need to be first, clean those up, then go to motor control. Next up will be some of the corrections with that, but I think it's important to be able to separate that if you have a problem and you need to peel it back to that level. Because if I wouldn't have noticed that lacking of internal external rotation, I don't think I would have just been, I would have been continually hammering my shoulder mobility and with rib rolls, but it wouldn't have really gotten better. Even with the reaching and the rib rolls, which I'll show next in the progressions, gotta make sure where it's coming from to know what to do with it. 